dynamic HTML. HTML5, it feels like to me, maybe you can correct me, like a, a beautiful piece of design work. Uh, it was, uh, it's not often with web stuff, I, you have this breath of just like, oh, whoever did this is, it, it, they fit, it, it just feels good. Uh, is that, what, what are your thoughts about HTML? Is the, am I being too romantic? A little uh, bit, a little it, bit. Are there flaws, <laughs> fundamental flaws to it that I'm just not aware of? <laughs> I'm, I, my, I'm, you know, my old friend Hixie did a great job. He was a, another uh, renegade physics student. Uh, he, and he was a basically a QA guy at opera, but he obviously is a f trained physics, you know, uh, student and uh, someone who could write a uh, Britisher. He, he developed test suites and he started thinking about them more axiomatically. Now this is, this can be good because you can sort of systematize in a way that makes a better HTML, or you can get caught in the pragmatism of saying, well, we have to handle all of these edge cases. So we're just going to have sort of a, a test matrix. Mm -hmm. And if the matrix is large, it will not be beautiful by many people's lights. Everyone likes to minimize along their preferred dimensions, the seven special forms in scheme or whatever. But, um, but reality is HTML needs uh, to be big. It's kind of shambolic, it's a creative multi-paradigm. And Hixie did a good job, I would say, with a, a bunch of it. Uh, other people came in, in the spirit of Ian Hickson, to, to do HTML5 work, and they've carried on that effort. And it's a so it's a mix of pragmatism, de facto standards from the past being sort of combined or written down for the first time, and then rethought in a way that has a simpler syntax, like the fetch API instead mm -hmm. of, XML HTTP request. Um, this video too, as well. It, it, it ultimately, yeah. it feels like, maybe you can correct me, it feels like it was the nail in the coffin of Flash. Steve Jobs saying no Flash on the iPhone, in my opinion, was the actual, the, the actual stake net. through the heart. But, <laughs> <Yeah>. but <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not sure what trope you want to use. This Flash was a zombie for until just this year, right? Or last year. I think yeah. last year was the end of Flash in, in main browsers. Um, but Jobs really did the death blow. And uh, yeah, you're right. We had to make HTML5 competitive. I still don't think we got that beautiful timeline animation. Well, the timeline thing. Yeah. So you like the time. I mean, me from, uh, I, you know, I used to animate all kinds of stuff inside Flash. Plus there's a programming element. Yes. It was a little bit, I don't know if you can comment on that, but to me, it was a little bit like go-to statement, like in a sense that it was a little bit too chaotic. Mm -hmm. Like it didn't, uh, that OCD part of me as a programmer, wasn't satisfied by Flash. It feels like there was bugs that were introduced through the animation process that I couldn't debug easily. Yes, and I heard that too. I, I didn't use it, so I'm doing the grass is greener thing here. Yeah. The thing I, I liked about the animation model was that it was this immutable function of time. So you yes. could time warp and you could, if you dodged these bugs or worked carefully, you could really make it sing in ways that I think still a little challenging with the web uh, animation standards, but, uh, or just using raw canvas and WebGL. Um, but there's so many tools now that maybe it doesn't matter. And and yet we had to, you know, do video, we had to do uh, WebGL and then evolve it. Um, we had to do web audio. Um, but once we did all these things that helped Flash uh, die, thanks to Steve Jobs, <laughs> we had something that um, people didn't realize. We had that vision that Mark and Jason had, this, this graphics-capable, yeah. to-the-metal, uh, portable runtime. 